What's happening? Hello world and welcome to your 24th SQL Server tutorial. My name is Johnny DeLuca and today I'm going to be showing you how to create or view or drop or revert to a database snapshot using T-SQL as well as SQL Server Management Studio. Okay, um, to begin here, as I noted in my last tutorial, from here on out, these tutorials are going to be pretty much exclusively how-to tutorials. We're not going to get too concerned with the why, and that's because I want to keep these short, clear, and concise. I figure that the majority of you are coming here to YouTube to watch tutorials because you want a short, you know, show me how to do this type of thing as opposed to a lengthy explanation of the technical jargon as to why I reviewed some of my previous tutorials and although I did a pretty good job at keeping almost all of them at 10 minutes or under that still could have been considerably cut down had I excluded lengthy passages of explaining technical jargon which kind of makes it harder to focus on and just downright a little bit more boring really because <laughs> sometimes the explanations are pretty dry and unfortunately they have to be that way but so I'm not going to go back and redo those tutorials um, and just know that that information in those tutorials when I'm explaining technical jargon in detail is very beneficial but from here on out it's going to be strictly pretty much housed with very minimal explanation as to why. If you have questions on the why, leave them in the comment section. I'll do my very best to answer them. You can always Google them. There's tons of information out there on different websites, web forums, tons of great SQL Server books that explain the why in much more detail. So. Okay, with that in mind, I, I'm going to have to explain a little bit to you from you know time to time. So I'm just going to... A database snapshot is a static read-only copy of an existing SQL Server database. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that to begin with. Okay, and now to uh, create a database snapshot using T-SQL, I've already done it. You can see commands completed successfully. I went ahead and did it before I began recording but I need you to copy in uh, type in this code here and you're going to hit execute and it should say commands completed successfully and uh, so you're going to have these are file this is this is the path here the C uh, this is the uh, folder I had you create in the beginning and you have to make sure you specify all files that we've already use concerning my database too. If you remember in the beginning when one of my first tutorials I had you create my first database and your second database you created the only two that you've created so far was my database too. Now AdventureWorks we've been using a lot lately but that we installed. That's a Microsoft one for demo purposes and whatnot. So anyways we're using my database too so we have to specify here these files, my database 2 and psql 2 are previous ones we used. Otherwise, it'll give you an error saying, hey, missing file, blah, blah, blah. You know, if I didn't put uh, psql 2, for instance, and I just did this one, I would get, hey, we're missing this guy. Can't create a snapshot, an error to that extent. So, anyways... Now you know how to create a database snapshot using T-SQL. And now I'm going to show you how to view a database snapshot with SQL Server Management Studio. Now to view it is really simple. Um, we go up here, we see this new folder that's been created, database snapshots. That wasn't there before we ran this script. Well, now it is. And then boom, there you go. There's your snapshot right there. So pretty simple to view it. Now you know how to view a snapshot with SQL Server Management Studio. Now I want to show you how to drop a database snapshot using Management Studio. And to do so, we are going to open Object Explorer, expand the database folder, which we already have. 
expand the snapshot folder which we already have and then we're going to right click and we are going to go uh, select the uh, snapshot we want sorry I had to pause it for a second I just got an important text that I was waiting on um, so to drop it we're going to go to delete right here D delete and drop same right click on the snapshot and then we're going to delete from the context menu right there now we're going to get this menu right here we're going to check the box labeled close existing connections boom right there and then we're going to click OK executing boom we are done now I'm going to show you how to do the same thing to drop a database snapshot using T-SQL. So to do that, we need to paste in, we need to copy down some new code. Okay, to do that, we can just get rid of this guy. We no longer need it. No. We're going to go to the new query editor. Okay, and to do this, we're first going to need, we're going to need to run two scripts. We're going to need to run the original one that we used. We first created a snapshot and then we deleted it uh, using Management Studio. Well, now we need to create it again because we can't drop something that's not there. So let's go ahead and create that. Okay, now it's created. We can go back, refresh over here, and we should see it back again. All right, now. I'll show you the script that you need to run to drop it with T-SQL instead of using Management Studio. Okay, we can get rid of this guy right here again. No, we don't need you. Now we go back up to the new query. Real simple one-liner. Execute. Wait a sec. Oh. I know exactly what's wrong. Wrong one. Uh, needs to be my database too. There we go. That's actually good that you see something like this because these are the type of little things that you will run into. Right. Yep. And once again. <laughs> There we go. There we go. Those are the little kind of things you'll run into as a database administrator from time to time. So yeah, anyways, but now you see how to go ahead and drop the database with a T-SQL script. Okay, now next thing I want to show you is how to revert to a database snapshot using T-SQL. Alright, and to do that, we're going to to in the query editor execute the following we can get rid of this guy nope we don't need you anymore okay and the code that you're going to want to execute to revert or restore is right here we're restoring my database to okay I'm sorry, I know what's going on here. Duh. It, we, we have to go and create the snapshot again. So, what we're going to do, I need to grab Oops, not that guy, this guy. Right here. Sorry about this. But, eh. Welcome to the world of being a database administrator. It's never a glitch-free ride. Not for thin-skinned people. <laughs> All right. Now, paste that back in. Command's completed successfully. Now let's go grab the script that I wanted. This guy right here. Copy that. Get rid of this guy. Paste this guy in. 
man's completed successfully. So, uh, like I said, I'm not going to get too much in the explanations, but concerning reverting to a database snapshot, one of the biggest advantages you can leverage by creating database snapshots is that you may be able to use them as a backup to a back database backup. So a backup to a backup. So like, for example, assume that someone accidentally deleted data from a table in your database. Or maybe, say, a table has been dropped. How would you restore that object? You could use a database backup. However, if you created a database snapshot, you could use that snapshot instead. And the snapshot may offer an even more recent version of the database schema and data than your last backup would. So this is another alternative, a backup to a backup. Pretty cool, huh? So thanks for watching. I hope that made sense. Sorry about the little technical hiccups, but like I said, uh, if you want to be a database administrator, you better get used to it because they happen. <laughs> thanks for watching. See you in the next tutorial.